Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Let's go around the league. Let's talk about different teams and what we might see next year with changes. Uh, boy, I thought the strangest stuff came out of Edmonton this year. I mean, Eric Tillman can be guilty of a couple of stupid things. One off field and one getting rid of Ricky Ray. And no matter what he says, no matter how he justifies it, it hasn't sat well with the Edmonton Eskimo fans. And I just don't know what the hell he was thinking because all year long they have struggled at quarterback. Right. And he wanted to free up cap space by getting rid of his expensive quarterback. Well, you also want to keep your expensive quarterback so that you have a chance to win every game and win some Grey Cups. And draw now, people to your yeah, games. And they hadn't, yeah. been, they hadn't been winning Grey Cups in the past few years, but Ricky Ray is still a viable player. Now, he got hurt for Toronto this year, and, and things fell off the map. Instead, Eric Tillman likes to have depth on at every position and have all these guys on the injured list to keep them around and to build and to grow. He was a formula to use in Saskatchewan, and then he got really lucky when he traded Kerry Joseph at the end of his line and Darian Durant emerged. Well, they haven't had the Darian Durant emerging uh, with the Edmonton Eskimos this year. Matt Nichols might have a future, but they're playing Kerry Joseph right now. And the guy they got in the trade for Ricky Ray is Stephen Giles. They also picked up Grant Shaw, and he's missed two field goals at the end of games to, that cost them wins. Yeah, it's a bad trade. It was sticking your neck on the line, so you should expect that if it didn't work out, you're going to have to move on. I think the, ne the next logical step for the Eskimos, to me, Eric Tillman will be gone at the end of this year, moving on to some other scenario, whether it's Ottawa or somewhere else. And then Quentin Porter is going to be the starter for the Edmonton Eskimos next year. You think Porter's going to be, they're going to make him? Well, he's the free agent quarterback that I would suspect that some teams are going to be looking at. And yeah. Edmonton was the team that needs a quarterback more than anybody else. Uh, he would look good in green and gold, I think, especially with Fred Stamps and a running game attack that they can put together with, uh, with Hugh Charles and yep. General Messam, who signed yep. for a few years. That, to me, would look like a, you know, a, a good way to, to formulate an attack there because Quentin Porter is the best short yardage quarterback in the league, and Hamilton Tiger Cats haven't used him this year. He's done in Hamilton. He's not yep. going to come back to that situation. Uh, to me, that's, that's the guy I would target out and of all the young quarterbacks that are around the league. You know, and then, of course, Tillman going with all those running backs. Uh, you can't keep bringing Boyd in. You can't keep people happy like that, no matter who you are. So it would just seemed like a mess. And then they got on a winning streak, so then they came back to normal. Another team that I thought made very, very stupid decisions this year, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And Joe Mack, I, I think his neck is on the line. In fact, I think they, with all the decisions that that guy's made, he should be gone because this is a diehard community, uh, football community, yeah. and they don't take for fools very long. Uh, I mean, we've seen Mike Kelly last there. <laughs> he was gone. Yes. And I think Joe Mack is making the same kind of stupid moves there. I, I love the ban Joe Bowl as B-A-N hyphen G-O-E yeah. Bowl. Yeah, <laughs> that, was a, that was a good yeah. move for the, the, the Winnipeg fans. They're going to have. They're going to be moving into a new stadium next year. They're going to want a fresh start. Do you think they are? <laughs> well, I, it's, Jesus it's gotta Christ! Be, it's got to be next year, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not going back to Canada in stadium. You yeah. can't make me. Yeah. The uh, the situation there is they have to decide when they're going to move on from Buck Pierce. I yep. mean, Buck Pierce. There you go. Buck Pierce can win games. Joe Mack decided. Nope. Buck is our guy. He played a, a remarkable 16 starts last year. More than more than his 10 previous was his highest uh, in his career. That was. It was a move that you just go, well, yeah, it'll work until it doesn't, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work, work anymore. Yep. He comes back, and he wins him a game, and then he gets hurt because he's standing in the pocket taking stupid hits. Now, I'm not referring to the one that he took from Brandon Isaac a few weeks ago. That one was really bad. This past game against, uh, you know, his most recent game against Toronto, he was standing in taking a lot of shots, and he's not going to last like that. Yep. So, I admire him, and he's yeah. you know when he is healthy, he can't play. But. And, and Joe Mack's philosophy was, if you played in the CFL before, I don't even want to see your name. I don't want to see your name on a contract. Well, how ridiculous is that? Yeah. Well, you look at what the Stampeders has done, just as a, a point of reference. Stampeders, when they get injury problems, they bring in veterans immediately. Yeah. Fix the problem. Bobby Kahn, Tad Cornegay. I've never An seen Anwar anything. Stewart, yeah, like Jason Armstead. Well, we got a problem here. Yeah. Who can we get to fix? 
Well, somebody that knows what to do in the CFL, not we'll bring another guy up from the States and hopefully you know, he can figure it out within a matter of minutes. I've never seen an airlift in Calgary like I've seen this year. Yeah, well, yeah. and it, it's been effective, sure. right? Yeah. Because you, you, they believe that they have the team to make a run. You, you have to you know, patch some holes. Winnipeg, they've had injuries and they're just bringing new guys. Well, they're gonna have the rookie of the year, yes, but don't you think it would have helped that they've had some you know, veteran players to have some presence there? It, the, uh, the veteran defensive backs were complaining about it in the offseason when free agency and they lost all these names and they said, well, what's our guy doing? Nothing. We're not in the free agency for CFL veterans. How ridiculous is that? It is. It's crazy. Um, I want to ask you about a couple of other guys. You know, we've talked about Casey Crehan being shipped out in Hamilton. Uh, you brought an interesting uh, fact up. Usually there's about three coaching changes in an eight-team league, yeah. which is crazy, but I can't see anybody. There was four last year, so. Yeah. I can't see, well, this year, uh, uh, them releasing uh, their head coach in Winnipeg was right. stupid, I thought, just totally. Tim Burke, uh, he inherited a team, and I don't even know if he'll be back. I think they have to clean house all together there. Well, that's the interesting scenario. Once they get rid of Joe Mack, which should happen directly after the season, although Winnipeg making that push for the final playoff spot is like, well, which team are they? The team yeah. that making the final push or the one that was awful throughout the year? Yep. Tim Burke has done a decent enough job there in a terrible situation. He probably should get a chance as head coach. This was an awful situation for him. So do they go back and say, okay, we've assessed it. They're going to have to bring in some candidates. Think about the whole situation and then decide, okay, if Tim Burke's your guy, that's fine. But you have to go through the process and decide that first. Now, I like Tim Burke a lot. He was here for a few yep. years and He's a great guy, and he wants to be a head coach, and he took a bad situation, and he's made the best of it. So in that, in that scenario, you should give him a chance somewhere eventually. Jeff Reinbold uh, was the head coach for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers when they had a couple of really bad years, but he's a survivor in this league. I mean, he's a survivor wherever he goes. I always got a kick out of him. He's a cancer survivor, too. Yeah, I always got a kick out of him. Uh, you, you know, when he was special team coach, when he was the coach in, in, in Winnipeg, Interview wise, beautiful. <laughs> you got quotes, you got great stories, and I love the lifestyle that he had. But the thing. Motorcycles, right? Yeah, yeah, just, he was just an off the wall cat, yeah. and I identified with him. But anyhow, the thing that's interesting, when he went to Montreal this year, I couldn't believe how bad that defense was at the start of the year. How many yards, how many points. And then it looks like something is stabilized. What has gone on there? Well, I think it took him a while to figure out the differences between the league now and to when he was in the league a decade ago, more than a decade ago, back in the 1990s, right? Yep. The league has evolved and it took him a while to understand some of the nuances and some of the changes. And once he figured out, okay, these are the plays that people are running a lot, this is what's effective, we, we gotta eliminate crossing routes because that's the thing nowadays, they, they've done a good job and he's utilized his personnel in, in better ways. And it took him a while to realize what his personnel was and what their strengths and weaknesses were. So for a guy who's been out that long, it was an impressive way to come back into the league and learn, have the faith of his head coach, which, which if you don't have the faith of your head coach and Mark Tressman put his faith in him, then you're in real trouble and gave him that chance to learn and grow. And I think they've done an, a pretty interesting job. Now they have a ton of injuries on offense. They're going to need that defense to win them games in the playoffs. And I would say, hmm, that, that'll be tough. Can so, you back one more year? Uh, I, I don't know. That, yeah. it's all it's all up to him and his how he feels. Yep. And he's actually looked better than you know health wise and speed wise. You know, for him to get two <laughs> rushing <speed>. touchdowns, <laughs> yeah. for him to get two rushing touchdowns <laughs> yeah, yeah. at forty yeah. in Saskatchewan yeah. against a really tough defense. Yeah. He's never done that his entire career. So yeah. why stop now? Yeah. Who's what's been the biggest surprise to you this year? Just quickly. Toronto having some struggles, and yeah. obviously when Ricky Ray went down, you can understand it, but the big surprise was they went away from what they were doing, with, which was Corey Boyd running the ball, yeah. and they went to a different guy, and he got hurt. That, to me, Toronto I thought was going to be a shoe-in to host the, one of those playoff games in the East, and now it's they're still up shoot. in the air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>